He certainly has details. Those haphazard, chaotic scenes of the Western withdrawal from Afghanistan continue to have political reverberations in all of the NATO member states, and the United Kingdom being a senior partner in that alliance is no different. Many taking aim at Boris Johnson for his government's uh, perceived uh, mishandling of the crisis. <coughs> Boris Johnson uh, strongly coming up fighting, defending the UK's record over the past few weeks and months uh, in evacuation people from Afghanistan, not just Afghans, but also uh, people from other countries as well, uh, but also defending the record of the NATO alliance when it comes to uh, the lack of any terror attacks that were planned from Afghanistan over the past 20 years. One of the most spectacular operations in our country's post-war military history. No terrorist attack against this country or any of our Western allies has been launched from Afghanistan for 20 years. Now, critics would point to those comments and say that that's all well and good, but there are no guarantees going forward as to uh, whether or not any terror groups will be able to uh, regather in Afghanistan or launch attacks from there. But uh, as far as those critics are concerned, the UK government has fallen short of any type of uh, planning for the post-occupation phase in Afghanistan, and Keir Starmer is one of those uh, critical voices pointing out that from the time the Doha agreement was signed until uh, the eventual withdrawal, there was a whole 18 months, and that there was simply no excuse for the type of uh, chaotic scenes that we witnessed. The government doesn't have a plan to get everybody out. Kabul airport remains closed to international flights. Safe passage has not been created to Afghan's neighbours. And whatever the Prime Minister says today, there is no international agreement on the resettlement of Afghan refugees. We have a Prime Minister incapable of international leadership just when we needed it most. I know it's uncomfortable. Now against that backdrop, you've also been seeing reports that some Afghans were actually removed from their flights at Kabul uh, airport, where just hours earlier, bomb, uh, that huge bomb had taken uh, place, and one Labour MP saying that some amongst his constituents uh, had family members who had that exact fate before them. The families of two of my constituents, including a seven-month-old child, were forcibly removed from flights and thrown out of Kabul airport onto the streets where the scene of the horrific suicide bombing hours before. Mr. Speaker, I am absolutely furious and I want to ask the Prime Minister how on earth was this potentially fatal decision allowed to happen even after I raised these matters with ministers sat to his left and his right. And how many others were ejected from the airport into harm's way? And just what does he have to say to the families that the government has now put in grave danger? I'm told we have no evidence of anybody being uh, pulled off uh, flights. But I would ask him, to, uh, obviously, Mr. Speaker, I would ask him to, uh, to raise it with, uh, raise the particular cases directly with, uh, with my right honourable uh, friends. So Boris Johnson, uh, hugely proud of the UK's effort over the past weeks to evacuate many, but there are those who say that there are still those left behind who need help.